to Griffin Update Sports, a student-produced show all about Missouri Western Athletics. We've got it all every week. Highlights, games, players, fans, and every sport all year long. Welcome to Griffin Update Sports. I'm Jake Michael. And I'm Morgan Doyle. To get you up to speed on Missouri Western sports, women's soccer won in overtime 2-1 at Washburn to wipe a three-game losing skid. Men's and women's golf kicked off their respective tournaments. At the Holiday Inn Express Classic, the men tied for 10th after the first day. And at the Midwest Classic, the women placed second after one round of play. Alicia again placed second individually. Men's and women's cross country took care of business not too long ago as they competed back here at home in St. Joseph for the Griffin Open. Reporters Riley Reagan and Jessica Stallard have more on the story. Saturday morning was usually cold and wet for the end of September, but that didn't stop the Griffin men and women's cross-country teams from prevailing. First off was the women's race where Western junior Megan Gillen was the top runner with a time of 19 minutes and 46 seconds. Gillen cruised through the course with no opponents in sight. Junior Kelsey Cox finished in fourth place with a time of 20 minutes and 44 seconds. The Griffin women finished with a team score of 26 to win the meet. I think we're racing really well. Um, I know there was a really, really good pack like all throughout the race, and so you always race better when you're racing with your teammates, so everyone's working really well together. Next up was the men's race where freshman Ian Kibbett and sophomore Andrew Wright started out in the lead. Kibbett finished in second place with a time of 27 minutes and 10 seconds. Wright finished in third with a time of 27 minutes and 14 seconds. The men's team finished with a score of 25 points to put them in first place. I thought we were well there too. You know, um, Andrew and Ian got out a little bit hard and paid for it in the, in the long run, but I think we ran well and, um, you know, if we could do it again, we'd race a little bit differently, but they're young and that's, you know, mistakes are going to be made. Presentation on October 12th and with conference on the 26th in Joplin. This is Jessica Stallard reporting for Griffin Media and Riley Reagan. And you know, Coach Ingold hasn't been at the helm for very long, so that just makes this all the more impressive. Yeah, this definitely is impressive. And as one of Coach Ingold's track athletes myself, I'm pretty excited to see where he takes these cross-country and track teams. But now, Jake, let's talk about some football. The Griffin football team picked up their third win last week against Washburn. And while everyone knows about the passing game and the stifling defense, let's not forget about the guys they have in the backfield. Yeah, I think most people would call this, you know, like a running game by committee. But for opposing defense, it's kind of just pick your poison. Reporter Derek zimmerman Geyer tells us more about the core of running backs. Sharing may not be everyone's favorite thing to do, but it's a reality here for Griffin football's explosive group of running backs. And it's worth it. Marco Smith, Duran Thompson, and Shamara Griffith have 10 touchdowns between the three of them, and they become simply known as Earth, Wind, and Fire. With Smith known as the team's fire for his engine, Thompson as the Earth for his solid maneuvering, and Griffith as the wind for, of course, his shifty running, Missouri Western's run game ranks fifth in the MIW Conference with 210 yards per game. Yes, sir! Yes, sir! It's not too complicated for running back coach Andre Crenshaw, because when talent works hard, success is a given. I think the biggest thing for them is just to focus on a daily basis, and their preparation throughout the week has been very high. While Smith and Thompson are both graduate student transfers, Shamar Griffith is still the veteran running back here at Western, and he sets the tone. The biggest one, you know, you kind of watch Shamar, he's always He's kind of being a silent, silent leader, you know, carry, you know, by example type of a guy. Um, so for him, it's just been, you know, those guys have come and pushed him and he continues to, to do the right things. Through five games, Griffith has 50 carries for 298 yards, good enough for six yards a pop, and also at a long of 82 yards against Washburn last week. Yeah, it's kind of as a silent because I just lead by example and I really don't, I'm not much of an outspoken person, so I see where he gets that from. While the quarterback play of senior White struggled has been exceptional with his stat line of 12 touchdowns, just three interceptions, and 241 yards per game, Griffith says his squad is the key to the offense due to a variety of talents. We have the best of both worlds. We have a big back, and then you have the smaller back, and then you have the in-between backs 
which is considered like me and Deron Thompson. And we all we all had that same mindset as like, hey, we get the ball, we're trying to score, we're trying to score. If we can get it rolling, we get the offensive rolling. So that's kind of our like motto and mindset of the backfield. What makes this group so dangerous is their variety. Marco Smith leads the MIAA with seven touchdown rushes, and Deron Thompson has two of his own. While Jared Scott doesn't have his nickname yet, he does have three touchdowns to his name in a 110-yard effort against Northeastern State just a few weeks ago. For the Western Windup and Griffin Media, this is Derek Zimmergeier signing off. We're now joined by Derek to get some more information on these guys. Derek, they're a special bunch, and it started out as just earth, wind, and fire, but then the redshirt freshman burst onto the scene, but when did he pop? Well, first off, we gotta give Jared Scott a nickname at some point, right? I mean, that's too good of a nickname trio to go along with, but I think it was that UCM game where he had that you know, key touchdown in the fourth quarter that really like, sparked Coach Crenshaw's interest. And then just a few weeks ago against Northeastern State, he had like 110 on the ground. Mm -hmm. So and he showed he can ball. Now, do any of them remind you of any great running backs based on the way they play? Shamar Griffith, this is kind of obvious. He reminds me of Darren Sproles. I mean, yeah. Shamar is uh, 5'7", which I think might be a stretch, and Darren Sproles is only 5'6". The only thing is Shamar doesn't have the thickness, but you know who has the thickness is Markel Smith. He's 5'11", 230. He reminds me a lot of Garrett Blunt, the way he runs. He's just very physical. He's like a train. He just has a really good engine, and, and it really complements Shamar. Well, I mean, hey, if they keep this up, who knows where it might take them. Thanks, Derek. In other sports news, it's been an up and down roller coaster for women's volleyball so far. That's right, Morgan. They picked up a big win on Saturday and hopefully it keeps going. I was there Saturday to catch the action. Here's how it all went down. Missouri Western women's volleyball extended their win streak to two on Saturday after taking down Missouri Southern three sets to one. This win streak is their longest since they started the season 5-0 and and now they sit at sixth in the MIAA standings. This is a really big win for us. We started off a little slow in our conference play, so this is a really big win for us. They've been going to five sets a lot lately with good teams, so it's a good win. And it's nice to be home and get wins at home. Yeah, it's nice to see all the fans come out and play yeah. for our classmates and former athletes. So. We're just going to go into every game the same. We respect all our opponents and we just want to come out strong each night and play Griffin Volleyball, play strong, and. We know we're a great team, so we just want to show everyone else. With stifling defense at the net and their usual power hitting, the Griffs will have their opportunities to rack up many more wins and possibly make a run in the MIAA championships. Against Missouri Southern senior Marissa Riccio recorded 15 kills to lead the team and hit 300. Junior Allie Talkin added to her already stellar season with 14 kills. Head coach Marion Carbon spoke highly of Talkin after the game. She's a really great player. For us, the thing that we've really liked seeing is just her um, kind of being a go-to in really big moments. She, ha she doesn't shrink in those moments. She's come through for us. Our team knows, our setter knows that we can rely on her in those big moments. She, she's not going to tip. She's not going to be scared. Whether we're down by one late in the game or we're up by one and need to close it out, it does not matter. She's going to go up there, take a big confident swing. And so that's been really good for our team to have a player like that that we can depend on in those moments. Now already well into conference play, there are very few gimmies left on the schedule. And if they can knock off their next opponent in the Nebraska Kearney Lopers, the only undefeated team left in the MIAA, it'll be one of the biggest wins in Coach Carbon's tenure and in Missouri Western volleyball history. Reporting for Griffin Media, I'm Jake Michael. They're definitely a talented bunch, and Coach Carbon always has them ready to compete. Yeah, well, they'll definitely have to be ready for this next game against Nebraska Kearney, and I'm sure they will be. Coming up, we have Derek's 60-second hot take, but first we'll take a short break for a public service announcement. More Griffin Update Sports after this. A leading problem I faced is a misunderstanding on the part of students of the importance of academic advising. They miss appointments. They don't make appointments. But what's most disappointing is when they come unprepared. Give me a student with a plan in their head, or better yet, on paper. We could talk about their interests, not just about their classes. We could discuss internships, classwork, grad programs. It would open the door to what advising is truly about. Can I help you? But instead, they come to me in a panic when they need to register because... I didn't need to talk to you. I was trying to register for my classes, but it wouldn't let me do it because I need my pen, and I haven't had time to set up an advising, so I don't even know what classes I need to take, so I just signed up for a bunch of random ones, and I'm going to drop them later. So can I have my pen real fast? Because I'm still locked into a computer in the lab. Am I interrupting? Take ownership of your education. Make the most of your advisement by being proactive, punctual, and prepared. You'll open the door to more personalized attention and avoid costly setbacks. It's never too soon to begin planning your next steps at Missouri Western.
Welcome to Hot Takes. You know it's me. It's DZG. I'm Derek Zimmergaier, the host of the Western Wind Up podcast. It's a bit chilly outside, but just like my dad's homemade chili, these steaks are going to be a little seasoned, so drop my needle before they get cold. It's time for homecoming week, and it's time for people to pay some respect on Griffin football's running game. The Griffins are fifth in MIAA in rushing, and they have a leading rusher in touchdowns in Markel Smith, who has seven. Meanwhile, Missouri Southern is 10th in rushing yards, given up per game, with 244, is given up 10 rushing touchdowns on the season. Washington has 16 rushing touchdowns on the season, good for second most in the league, and they will score five this Saturday in a blowout win, 49-24. After losing to a number five ranked Washburn team, 3-1, Griffin Volleyball has comeback swing, or should I say, setting. Washington is running a two-game win streak against two teams with a combined record of 16 and 15, and won both games very handedly. By the end of this month, Halloween will be the only scary thing around, as the Griffins will eventually crack the top 25 rankings. Missouri Western Soccer has given up 21 goals this year, but is also third in conference with 79 saves, and Anna Mayer has 71 of them. Expect more attempts from Mayer to show off her skills, as she and Western will remain in the top three for the rest of the season. I'm all out of chili-tastic takes, so come back next week for a new plate. For the Western Windup, which you should follow on Twitter, by the way, Mrs. Derek zimmer Geyer, signing off. Welcome back. For this show's roundtable, we're joined by sports reporter Tanner Cobb to discuss some of the most influential athletes of all time. Now, Jake, pretty sure I already know who you're going to say, but let's hear it. I have, to, I have to go with my favorite athlete of all time, Michael Jordan. Shocking. Shocking <laughs> indeed. But, I mean, you, you think about how he made the game of basketball a global game and how, you know, everybody around the world became polarized by this one player who was just taking the whole league by storm and completely changing the way we play basketball. And, you know, then you think about him as a business person, as a kind of a mogul sort of person. You know, he changed the way you market yourself as an athlete because of the way you saw Michael Jordan's face in the 80s and 90s on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then you talk about obviously his Jordan brand is just, it's still flourishing today. And, you know, not, I mean, a lot of, he kind of set the bar for a lot of athletes as to what they aspire to be, which is their own brand and just to be a face that they recognize or a logo they recognize. So Michael Jordan, for me, it will always be, uh, you know, an influence for me and for tons of athletes as they get older. You know, I hope more people know about him as they get older. It's kind of hard to see, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, he's worth dang near $2, million, $2 billion yeah. today. I mean, back in 1985, his rookie year, he brought out the Air Jordans 1s, which was the most expensive basketball shoes of that time, mm -hmm. and just what he's done on the court as well. I mean, he was the first real guard to really do anything. Before he came in the league, just about all the MVPs were big men. Since he's left, there's only been one big man to win MVP. Mm -hmm. That was Shaq. So, I mean, just to see how he's kind of shifted the way the basketball's played. And so many guys have kind of try to be him. Like Kobe's always wanted to be him. LeBron's tried to be him and be better because he was like the guy back to start it all off. Absolutely. And another, another NBA player while we're talking about NBA is Allen Iverson. I mean, the way he's kind of brought the fashion to the NBA. I mean, with the dreads, the baggy shorts, baggy shirts. Nothing we had never seen before. He had never seen somebody do that. The tattoos. I mean, he brought a swagger before really swagger was even a term and back right. in the early 2000s. And, you know, he's transcended the way, you know, players go about like their post game, you know, and their pregame, you know, outfits and stuff. Uh, like Russell Westbrook, I can tell, is probably, if you asked him, he'd be like, who are you influenced by? Like, where right. do you get your fashion from? And his confidence would probably say Allen Iverson, if you asked him. And that. being kind of a small guy, he's only six foot tall, he's kind of led the way for small guys like Isaiah Thomas and Steph Curry, guys who aren't that tall, but have been doing some things in the NBA today. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, now I'm going to take us away from the NBA a Please little do. bit. Please <laughs> we do. Get, we get a little off track yeah. with that. Um, so I actually thought of Tiger Woods because, and now I don't, condone the whole personal scandal that he had you know but he really has changed the way of golf when you look at it and or the way golf is played he there's now tiger proofing and courses are have been made so much more difficult since he came into the pros and uh golf pros are becoming pros at much younger age uh after he i think he was like 20 years old or something whenever he announced he was going pro and so now you're starting to see that a lot more where you didn't before him and so he really has just changed the way. And even how they practice, like now you look at golfers and they have exercise routines. And before him, that wasn't really that important of a thing. So he really has been someone who's changed the way that golf is played. Yeah, and you want to talk about another polarizing figure. You know, nobody really paid much attention to golf when, you know, during that whole 10 year stretch from his, you know, last major to then that Masters that he won. But then all of a sudden everybody rallied together because they all wanted to watch Tiger in this tournament because they all wanted to see him succeed again because he is a, he's a really good figure. Obviously, the, you know, the off-the-course stuff isn't great, 
but you know the way he carries himself i mean he's you know he's no certain embarrassment um and for a, a person who's been a phenom since like probably four feet tall and the way he's you know kind of you know developed his image i think he's been incredible yeah, I agree. I mean, not a lot of people are golf fans. Not everyone is, but I mean, God, Tiger Woods is a guy that everybody knows, you know. And but there's other sports too that people don't really like, like boxing. You know, it's it's a popular sport. It's not it's not for everybody. Muhammad Ali has got to be one of the most influential athletes of all time. I mean, what he's done for the African American race. I mean, he kind of brought black power to America back in the 1950s and 60s, way before our time. But still, we are always hearing about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was one of the first to really like push the envelope, right? So. You know, and during that whole anti-war movement where, mm -hmm. you know, based on his religious beliefs, he didn't want to go to war, um, he got a lot of flack for that. And then obviously changing his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali, you know, wasn't met with a lot of, you know, it, it, it wasn't taken in very well. So, you know, he, yeah, he's definitely one of those athletes that, you know, for a lifetime, we're going to know who he is just for that influence that he's had outside of, you know, his normal profession, which is boxing. I was gonna let you guys okay, go yeah. a little more. Oh uh, well, well, Jackie Robinson is another really good guy. I mean, he was one of the first. He was the first African American baseball player to play in the MLB, and you know the way he was able to do it in such a dominant way. I mean, he was the first MLB player to win Rookie of the Year, not just black or white. I mean, that 1947 was the first time they did it, and you know he kind of brought black, black and white people together from baseball fans because it was right after World War II. There's a lot of segregation going on. And he's just such an impactful baseball player. It's unbelievable what he had done, what he has done for the game. Yeah, and I, you know, Bo Jackson to me, and he's not somebody that's, you know, like a philanthropist or, you know, uh, an advocate of, of certain social issues. But just we never heard of a transcendent athlete until we saw Bo Jackson, and that's then the he truth. was on another level. He was so incredible that in Tecmo Bowl you couldn't stop him. Like literally, if you play with the Raiders, it's over, ball game. So he is an incredible athlete and somebody who, from what I know, did not lift weights because all he did was just do push-ups. I mean, that's just like, and he's a big dude. And, you know, not to mention he's, he can jump out, you know, any gym, jump off any field, you know. Uh, his 40 time, though, I, it was never recorded, was probably close to like a 4-2 maybe even faster than that. So he's a transcendent athlete that you can't really replicate, but, you know, we'll be comparing players to him because athletes are getting bigger, faster, stronger. Yeah, definitely. And I'm going to stay on the topic of uh, baseball here for a second and say someone who I thought was influential just like more on a local level, I guess, but also on a national level. Uh, just worldwide level, I guess. Um, Stan Musial for the Cardinals. I know that I've said I'm a Cardinals fan, but <laughs> hear me out. Um, he was, I mean, right around World War II, and so that was when baseball was becoming like big in the media, and people had leisure time, and so it was becoming very, very popular. And he was just known for his all-around like good character. And um, when I was looking up things for this, I was reading that he was actually one of the few that was nice to Jackie Robinson at first <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and didn't um, like ridicule him and everything. And so, I mean, he was one of the best, like Cardinal, he was the best Cardinal of all time, one of the best ball players, I would say. And now he's got the statue of himself up in St. Louis, but just the way that he played the game and then the way that he carried himself about the game and his good character and everything, I've listed him as influential in my book. Yeah, way back then, there was a lot of people who didn't really support Jackie Robinson and having a guy like him who, who would support him and just have a good character outside of baseball. Because really, athletes are more than just athletes. You know, they are people on a bigger level they are looked up to, and having people like that as role models is hugely influential. Absolutely. Yeah, they're put on a platform to, uh, you know, represent themselves and, uh, you know, represent their sport in the best way they can. And, you know, as, you know, certain athletes become a little more political, like even in their locker rooms and it starts to venture outside of there um, because they all have their opinions on certain social issues, you know, that's when, you know, you start to remember athletes. And even people who don't care for sports, you're going to know who they are because they've had such strong opinions about certain issues. Uh, like LeBron, you know, for example, you know, they passed that legislature where, you know, college athletes can, athletes can make money off their name. Now, I mean, that, yeah. that's just something we thought we wouldn't see, at least not for a long, long time. And so to bring him on like a nationally televised show and to do that and watch him sign it, I mean, that, that's just that's stuff that you can't, you can't make up and you, know, you can't write it a movie any better than that because, you know, that's been an issue for athletes for a long time because it is amateur sports at the end of the day. 
but you know that's going to affect how you know recruiting goes and you know more and more you know high school athletes are going to consider california schools because they can make money off their name and why wouldn't it be california i mean it's like yeah the, of course it's, yeah it's like the publicity capital of the world it's it's a great place to get your name out there so. i mean athletes nowadays they get made they make so much more money than any time ever so like it's a lot easier for them to do stuff and i mean lebron's really influential really i mean he just opened a school of cleveland at high school like a couple summers ago and he didn't have to do that you know a lot of guys can do whatever they want with their money and the way that lebron's done things like that i know we've already talked the nba but i mean lebron is probably one of the most influential guys of today's sports so i mean you can't really ignore what he's done for everybody I'd just like to point out that we just talked about Michael Jordan and LeBron James without an argument breaking out, <laughs> no. or a debate happening. Yeah, yeah we'll save that for, for another day. <laughs> yeah, we got, I could go on for a while, so we'll save that for another day. All right, I'm going to tie it back um, to what you were saying about how these athletes are given the spotlight and how they can make an influence with that. And um, something very recent that just happened um, with the – USA Olympic gymnast over the last few years. And so I'm sure that everyone's heard about this. But I figured, I mean, they were coming way out of their comfort zones and talking about what they were having to discuss with the whole um, sexual assault cases against Larry Nassar, their trainer, in the 14 years that he had worked for USA Gymnastics. And so there are a ton. I did gymnastics when I was little. I looked up to these girls. There are a ton of little female athletes out there that look yes, up to is. these Olympic gymnasts. And so for them to be able to come out and just be brave and tell their stories and say, hey, this isn't right. We're finally going to put a stop to this. I counted that as definitely influential and that kind of it put a spotlight on it and that was something that USA Gymnastics had kind of ignored up until that point so I give them props and I put up, put them up there as influential Absolutely. as well Absolutely. I agree that I can't be easy to do I mean that's a that's really hard for anybody to do let alone athletes who are looked up to and at a higher level so you got to give them credit for having the bravery to do that that's right yeah, they are people at the end of the day, and I think they are a great voice, a very powerful voice for women, um, you know, to come forward with these things. I agree. You know, it kind of reminds me of Muhammad Ali, who we touched on a little bit earlier. I mean, the way he was able to raise a bunch of money the recent years before he died, you know, with Parkinson's disease, because he had it himself, and with other health issues, it's, it's crazy how certain athletes are able to just help everybody with their power and their money and just other things that they have the ability to do. It definitely is. And I mean, one of the things that makes an athlete influential is not so much what they do on the court field, wherever they're playing, but also off of it and how they make a difference in Very normal true. people's lives. So thank you so much, Tanner, for being here with us today. This week in Griffin Sports, football is home this Saturday for a homecoming showdown against Missouri Southern and cross country is away at the Gary Stoner Invitational in Fayette. Women's volleyball will take on undefeated Nebraska Kearney on Friday, and women's soccer will have a four-game homestand starting against Fort Hayes on Friday. That's all we've got for you this week. Make sure to tune in to Griffin Update next week for the latest campus news and Jake's sports report. Catch us on Sunlink Channel 12 and our Griffin Media Vimeo and YouTube channels. From all of us here at Griffin Update Sports, thank you for watching. Welcome to Griffin Update Sports, a student produced show all about Missouri Western Athletics. We've got it all every week. Highlights, games, players, fans, and every sport all year long.